Yeah, well, a little bit about Be the Match. Cool. So, he is so tall, he's cutting me. I'm <laughs> sorry. Here's some bracelets if y'all y'all welcome to have these and pass them around. Oh. Here's some pamphlets too on, on the presentation. See, I wanted Colin to eat oh, while Plum was talking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think he did. He thought he wouldn't finish his food. <laughs> come in, come in, come in, come in, come in. Mm -hmm. All right. You have to wear that to sleep. Thank you guys for having us. Uh, this is the first time I've done this presentation. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I made this PowerPoint about a year ago. Really and looking back at it yesterday, I realized all the stats have changed. These stats are really fluid, changing all the time. So I had to update all the statistics on here. Um, I teamed up with uh, Delete Blood Cancer, um, which they're also known as DKMS. Um, I guess it's been about a year, a little over a year, a year ago. Um, they are out of New York. Um, Basically, they're the largest bone marrow donor center. They have 3.5 million registered donors, um, 37,000 transplants worldwide. Uh, basically, founded by this lady who, um, uh, uh, Katerina Hart was her name, um, and she's uh, this is sort of her her mission was to help find matches for people. Um, like I said, they're the large, world's largest and fastest growing bone marrow donor center. 3.5 million registered donors. Last year it was 3 million, I think, so that changed already. Um, of course, you probably know a lot of this stuff. Bone marrow, the soft sponge material found inside bones, uh, contains immature cells called stem cells. And there's, a, there's ways you can do transplantation uh, through peripheral blood stem, stem cells and, uh, and after they've been uh, destroyed, after the cells have been destroyed by chemotherapy. Stem cells, uh, they're pretty amazing, and it's sort of the new thing now, nowadays to, uh, uh, for politicians and everybody to talk about. But it's, uh, basically, it's, uh, stem cells have the ability to develop into many different cell types in the body. Um, they generate other, generate other blood cells in the human body, including red blood cells, platelets, and white blood cells. And most of these stem cells are found in the bone marrow. Some are called peripheral blood stem cells. They can be found in the bloodstream or the umbilical cord, as Plummer just mentioned. How I got involved uh, is through my friend Leslie, um, and that's her right here on the left. I don't know if you can see. This is one of our many bone marrow drives we did. Um, she was diagnosed with uh, AML leukemia uh, five hours before she delivered her baby. Oh, wow. um, she went to various doctors and they all thought it's complications from the pregnancy or you have mono um, and she kept saying you know there's something else going on there's something wrong and finally they they diagnosed her right before she gave her baby and, and they threw a c-section they basically said we need to get this baby out because um, basically they, they didn't know either of them would make it he's completely healthy which they share, shared the same bloodstream so it's, it's it's crazy how that works but he's healthy and, and fine, and she's uh, she's hanging in there too. They initially gave her six months to a year to live um, without a bone marrow transplant. How long has it been since then? Um, it's been it's been over a year, so it's it's been a while. She's she's beat the thought. Um, so we started doing drives basically. Uh, my first one was at Plassey Heights Methodist Church where I go to church. It was huge. We had three hundred something people get swabbed. We had four hundred people order kids online. We found a match out of that. And once I did that one, I thought, we've got to keep doing these. We're finding matches, um, not only for my friend, but for other people. So we've swapped 7,000 people in Arkansas so far. Uh, of course, Riverfest and diff just different venues. Um, home at my, my dad's clinic in Jonesboro, Arkansas. We we swapped there. This is my first drive here. It's Plasky Methodist Church. Uh, pretty much swapped everywhere that I can think of. <laughs> um, did ASU, we did uh, Central High School for um, Joe Johnson, the NBA player. His mother has multiple myeloma. So we did a drive for her at Central High School where he went to play basketball. He's in the NBA now. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been doing drives for her. And just through these drives, I've met other people that have various kinds of cancer or they know somebody and, and they want to know what they can do. 
but so far we found we've had five official stem cell collections out of all these. Um, so we've, we've had five people actually go in and donate stem cells. And, uh, Just from the 7,000? Yeah, and we had uh, 87 matches, I believe. Uh, this is just another, we had, we had Craig O'Neill come out and get, got swallowed at a shop and sip function in Hillcrest, <laughs> so any kind of TV helps. Um, and then I, I work at Blue Cross, and they were nice enough to, to let us have a drive there. And uh, Leslie came out for that one. She hasn't been able to make many of them because she's usually too sick. Um, huh, but anyway, huh. we even did Hooters Bike Night. <laughs> so we'll swab anywhere. We've done churches and Hooters Bike Night. <laughs> Um, this is just a small history um, of, of, of bone marrow. Uh, it talks about Dr. Thomas, who won the 1990 Nobel Peace Prize for his work in bone marrow, curing leukemias and other blood cancers. Um, the registry started developing probably around 1979, um, and uh, it's just it's still kind of coming along. Uh, the first official transplant was uh, in 1973 when a young boy was. A genetic uh, immunodeficiency disorder received multiple marrow transplants from a donor identified through a match through Denmark. So that was the, the first official transplant with a leukemia uh, patient took place in 1979 at the Hutchinson Center. So what can you do? Well, there's certain criteria you have to meet, and whenever I hold, have a drive, I always have this sheet, and it's got all the criteria. Basically, you have to be 1855, good general health, no histories of cancers. If anybody has questions, I have a medical guidebook. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Um, and a uh, certain body mass index, um, and stuff like that. Um, what age group did you say? 1855. 18 Why is that? I, I think they feel that the younger stem cells are the healthier <coughs> ones and they'll graft on to the, to the person better. Um, so they, they come up with the age requirements. Um, there's two different companies, um, well there's several, but the main two is to leave blood cancer and there's Be The Match. Be The Match, they just lowered their age requirement to 18 to 44. So, um, it's, and it all goes on the same database, their age requirement is just a little different. So, um, anyway, so there's there's a few requirements and I hate turning people away, but you know, it's for a good reason. Um, so this is just another list of, and, and a lot of times I'll get people that you know, they've, they've got one of these illnesses and they can't, they can't swallow, they want to. And I tell them you can still spread the word, tell your friends. Um, there's, there's other active things you can do um, even though you can't get swallowed. So um, they always feel guilty on it. Don't, don't feel guilty, you can still be an advocate. Um, and this is just the, talks about the prerequisites. Um, there's a little form we fill out Basically, it just has information and alternative contact information. A lot of times, they'll find a match and they can't find the person. So they have to find, you know, usually I'll have someone put like the parent or cousin, somebody that's you know, not going to move for a while because you can get on the registry and not get called until five years later. Well, you probably moved by then. So sometimes they have trouble tracking people down. So that's why we fill out a form. Basically, it just has, you know, your race, age, basic information like that. Once you've been swabbed, are you committed, or do you have an option? That you have an option, but I always tell people, um, don't get swabbed unless you're going to go through the whole process, because uh, a lot of times there'll be a match, the, the person will get their hopes up, and then they'll say no, and it's just heartbreaking. So I tell people, if you don't want to go through the whole process, don't get swabbed. That happened to my girlfriend that's going through it right now. She's at 102 days today. Really? And she, it happened to her twice in a row. They turned her down. They said they didn't want to do it. The, the donor. The, they declined. found a donor, and then the donor uh, wouldn't the, do it. And the just, donor backed out. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just I, I'd rather and, people almost not get swallowed. Is it um, as painful as it used to be? Not the swab, but um, uh, no, it's not. It's not as invasive as <coughs> it used to be. And uh, I'm about to get to that oh, right sorry. now. Yeah, no, okay. you're fine. Uh, that and that's good. that's the number one question people have because yeah. you're bone marrow and you just associate pain with it. And, and I did. I didn't. I didn't know about any of this, and I feel dumb because I took my friend getting leukemia for me to research all this and, and become aware. But uh, basically the, the whole swabbing procedure is you fill out a form, go over the requirements, fill out a form, rinse your mouth out with water. There's two swabs here. You swab each cheek for 15 seconds, and put it in this envelope, and then you send it in and you're on the National Registry until you're 61. 
and then you get a bone marrow card, pistol, pistol donor card. Say you're 50 years old and, and uh, uh, you you don't give your you don't donate it at that time. You donate it when they need it. But yeah. what if it's six or seven years later that they come to you by then are you too old yeah I've had, from what i understand after 61 it's kind of the cutoff and that's there's an extreme circumstance um, i did have a friend uh, last year she was 68 with leukemia and her sister was a match i'm pretty sure she was over 60 but um, so extreme circumstances but they really try to keep those age limits down to get the healthier cells um, so that's unfortunately why they have the, the age requirements because I didn't know many for um, leukemic patients beyond 60, something we... It's just generally we, over 50. Yeah, yeah, we don't think of <coughs> transplanting them, yeah. becoming a recipient. Because it could be a risk for them. Yeah. Um, I've had some questions from all these drives we've done. You know, how, how long does the, the process take? We've had, I think our quickest match we had was three or four months, but most of them are about a year later. I mean, it really takes time to process these and match them up. So that's why I try to get people on this registry, because timing is so critical. Um, but you are on the list immediately once they receive that uh, envelope. Um, if you want to host a drive, you can do it anywhere. You can do it if you're having a wine and cheese party, your church, um, yeah. at your business, anywhere. And that's what we really need to do, is get more people to do these drives, um, because Is the process painful? And that's that's the number one question we get usually. Um, uh, it's not, there's no drilling in the spine or anything like there was, you know, 10, 15 years ago. 70% um, of the time they can go through your arm. Uh, it's the peripheral uh, blood and stem cell donation. Uh, and I'll get to that process. But 30% uh, of the time they go through your hip. If they have to go through your hip, they give you general anesthesia. Um, most people, it's outpatient. They're back to work within, I think the longest I've heard is a week. Um, and I've heard somebody going back to work the next day. So there is some soreness involved, uh, but it's not, I mean, your stem cells replenish and your soreness goes away and you've, you've possibly saved a life. So that's what people don't realize is they hear bone marrow and they freak out. <laughs> so that's why we have to educate and do stuff like this. So, but um, to leave blood cancer, we'll also pay for, um, you know, anytime missed from work or to, you, know, you need to go to a different hospital to do the transplant or anything like that, they'll pay for it and they check on you every now and then to make sure you're okay. So you're not just, you know, giving stem cells and they're done with you. Now where is Delete the blood cancer located? Is they're, it? They're in New York. So uh, they're both in New York? Um, I'm not sure where Be The Match is um, because I've, I've really worked with Delete a little more, but I've actually flew, I flew up there last year and met everybody. So. But, uh, be the match. The National Bone Registry donor, uh, it's kind of the umbrella. Um, and then there's Be the Match, Delete Blood Cancer. I think there's another one that's kind of underneath it. But it all goes on the same database, really. So, so this, any swabbing is good. This uh, TV personality on, on uh, ABC, Robin, uh, Robin, Robin. Yeah. So, would she be, she would be the, um, be a donor? Be the match, yeah. Be the she match. went through Be the Match, yeah. yeah. Her sister was actually right. the match. Which actually pretty rare um, for a sibling to be a match is about 30 percent. Uh, 70 percent of the time you have to you know go find a complete stranger to save your life. So, um, but anyway the uh, the cost of the kits are, are $65 for DKMS or delete blood cancer. Um, they donate them to me for free and they overnight them so if there's a drive I need to do they're, they're real quick about that. Um, 65 per kit? Yeah, yeah, and they're, like the slide says, they're, uh, uh, because the QMS does not receive government funding solely dependent on financial uh, contributions from corporations, private foundations, and individuals uh, to support. So they're, they're big on donations. Um, and there's no cost for the donor to donate, and costs are covered by the patient's insurance or by the National Maryland Donor Program, which is the, the big which operates Be The Match and Delete Blood Cancer. And this includes costs for the travel, the meals, the lodging, and, and the donor's insurance will ever be used. So they really try to take care of the, 
the per realizing what sacrifice a person is making and taking care of them. Um, this is just a graph that shows the transplant activity. This is uh, autologous. I don't know, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, autologous. Autologous. Yeah, we have a friend. I have a friend that actually um, they used her own stem cells, mm -hmm. and she's she's in remission a couple years out now. Um, Here's your related donors, the green graph. Unrelated donors is the blue, which is, uh, it's, it's starting to, to, to get up there because uh, mm -hmm. we're getting more people added to the registry and getting awareness out there. Um, the survival rates are up. I mean, it's not a 100% deal, but um, it, they're up because we're adding more people. You mean, you mean you can find more donors because yeah, there are more statistics. people registered? Yeah, if we yes. get more registered, we have a better chance. Mm -hmm. um, AML is receiving related transplants, 85% to 94%, unrelated, 63 to 86%. One year post transplant patients who received an unrelated transplant showed an increased survival rate from uh, 48 to 63%. Wow. Um, so, um, so, you know, it's helping. And it's, it's just, it's like the umbilical cord thing. It's just also relatively new that not a lot of people know about it. Um, and it's just more about the survival rates, but it just basically says, you know, uh, the basic reason for this is because unrelated volunteer donors, um, as a result of Be The Match and Delete Blood Cancer, increase diversity on the registry. And that's another key is getting diverse ethnic groups um, because a lot yes. of minorities really have trouble finding Mm -hmm. um, this is my cousin getting swamped. <laughs> so I've had it short. <laughs> but you can order. You can also order. If you can't make a drive, you can order the free kit on deleteblowcancer.org. Uh -huh. Fill out a form online. They ship it to you. You swab. You ship it back. So if you can't make a drive, you can have it shipped in at no cost. So um, that's another thing people don't realize. I think you have to wait for a drive. You can, you can actually do it from there. This is the process going through the arm, the peripheral blood stem cell donation, if you are a match. Um, so basically they hook you up um, to a machine, filters out the cells, and they, they have basically two cords going into each arm. Um, it's all diaphoresis, right? Yeah. 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 Separates out the blood stem cells. The remaining is returned to the donor through the other arm. Um, outpatient procedure takes four, 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 the only, four, the only four, really eight. painful part about it is it's boring. It takes four to six hours. You're just kind of sitting there, you know, watching TV. Um, one to two, one to two days at the most. Uh, possible side effects, um, you know, flu-like symptoms, headaches, bone and muscle fatigue. Uh, most of those should subside in 48 hours. Um, the second one, which is the least common, is 30% of the time your doctor may opt to go, um, you know, behind the pelvic bone with a special syringe, but they give you a general anesthesia and no pain is uh, experienced in, during the extraction. This is a one to two hour process, totally outpatient. Possible side effects, uh, pain and bruising and stiffness for up to two weeks from the donation. Within a week, most, most donors are able to return to work, school, and many activities. So, and your, your stem cells are replenished after a couple weeks. So those are the two options if you are a match for somebody. Um, and this is just a
time for symptoms to disappear is 21 days. A uh, small price to pay for, for helping to save someone's life. Um, is, is bone marrow dangerous and weakens the donor? There, there's no medical procedure without risk, but only 5% of donors um, uh, or less of a donor's marrow is needed to save a life. So after donation, the body replaces the donated marrow within four to six weeks, and to leave blood cancer is always there to answer questions. I call them all the time because there's something they don't learn every day. Um, there's a myth that the pieces of the, of the bone are removed from the donor. No pieces are removed. It's all liquid marrow found inside the bones uh, from the bloodstream. Also, the process, they, they do give, if you are a match, they give you a shot of the, of the thing that yeah, he, the kid was talking about. It's a, a basically a, a protein shot that brings the cells to Service. So you would get a shot for a couple of days leading up to the actual donation. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not. Um, is, is it like um, GCSF? It's called Fibrastin. Fibrastin. It, it is the same thing. GCSF. Fibrastin. Like you get in. It's the. It's the. Um, shorter acting doses of Nulasta. Ah. Okay. You get Nulasta. It's ten. 10 doses of the Graston. Another big myth is people think you're going to drill into your, their spine, and that's not true. Um, there's, there's no spinal cord stuff involved. Uh, no. they, if they go with the second option, it's behind the pelvic bone. So, um, and the other I option. mean, they've done it sometimes in the sternum to harvest because that's an area also that has a lot of um, bone marrow stem cells, the sternum, if they yeah, have to. But it, it's a lot better in the. Uh, I know oncologists who used to do it on the stand. Okay. Yeah. But that's probably kind of would be sort of a last resort. Right. Uh, and of course, this goes back to the not all bone marrow donations involve surgery. Uh, there's, there's really not any surgery involved. Uh, and in the pain, uh, there's, there's no pain with the needle injection or pain during the marrow process. And afterwards, there's, there's pain in the lower back. Um, pain is just such a big question with this because people hear bone marrow and they, mm -hmm. they've seen Hollywood movies and they think it's, it's horrible. Um, and I talked about finding a match and uh, finding one within your own family, 30%, 30% of the time. And it does happen, but it's pretty rare. Most of the time you have to go to a complete stranger. And, um, and the odds, which change a lot, uh, are basically on average of one in 20,000 of finding, finding a match. Um, so the odds are, are pretty slim. Just some statistics, leukemia, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's so fatal. Um, and of course, I don't have to tell you, like, this is your support group, so you know, probably all know all these statistics. Um, but I just think it's important to realize how many people, because there's so many diseases and cancers that people sometimes forget about leukemia and some of these other ones, because it just doesn't have the marketing um, that, that other cancers have. Um, but 1,000 people die each year because they can't find their match, and that's what we're trying to Um, 
and I don't know if this has risen since last year, but the last time I checked um, online, only 2% of the population is on the National Registry, so there's just not enough people on the registry. Um, so we've got to get more people on there. Um, more statistics, uh, 35,000 people have donated bone marrow to a stranger without us. There's been no, no deaths um, during the <coughs> process. <coughs> Blood cancers are the second leading cause of, of death of children, uh, exceeded only by regular everyday accidents, car accidents, and stuff like that. And I think that's a pretty telling statistic. I think if, if, if more people knew this, then they would, they would be more advocates toward the cause. Um, and of course, every four minutes, someone is diagnosed with blood cancer. Every 10 minutes, someone, someone dies from blood cancer. I mean, some of these statistics, I'm big on statistics, so. And we talked about the 30% of match within your family, 70% from a stranger. <coughs> uh, six out of 10 patients never get the transplant they need. 